it is some time since i last spoke to you on the radio however though my continuous travels in various parts of the country and through the groups of large numbers of individuals whom i meet in delhi and elsewhere i have continued to be in close touch with you all your support your affection and your trust enabled me to serve india to the best of my ability on my journeys up and down the country i have been glad to find that our people have shaken off their sense of defeatism and gloom there is a new pride in being indians indeed it can be said that in the year just completed the nation has rediscovered its sense of purpose and potential strength some 18 months ago our beloved country was on the brink of disaster violence was openly preached workers were exhorted not to work students not to study and government servants to break their oath national paralysis was propagated in the name of revolution the democratic way would have been to work towards the next elections which were not far off government had to act and did act without purposive government a nation especially a developing one cannot survive at the time i made it clear that the restrictions imposed would be temporary they have been gradually eased the leaders and many of the rank and file who had been detained have been released for some time past press censorship has been relaxed and newspaper has been reporting the activities of people and parties restrictions would have been lifted earlier bad violence and sabotage been given up had there been no attempt to stir up communal and other unrest the discipline and feeling of hope enable us to initiate and pursue many policies to help those sections of the population who had not greatly benefited from development plans the constitution has been amended to remove impediments to policies which are designed to serve the people we have also undertaken programs to combat social evils such as dowry which is a burden on our middle classes and to promote family planning which aims at healthier and better cared for children any act of compulsion or harassment will be dealt with severely may i remind you that the emergency was proclaimed because the nation was far from normal now that it is being nursed to health we must ensure that there is no relapse normality means the orderly conduct of business this is possible only if people live by certain codes and norms of behavior democracy also has certain rules government functioning cannot be obstructed none should imperil the welfare of any section of the people or the safety of the nation if india is to live and prosper there can be no preaching of hatred no practicing of violence no encouragement of subversive activities or lowering of standards of public life the economic situation has vastly improved others are studying our anti inflation strategy production has increased thanks mainly to the new spirit of dedication which we see in our farmers in our industrial workers and in our scientists technicians managers and administrators the public has cooperated in spite of difficulties 
we have resumed work on many development plans which had been interrupted by the economic crisis and political disturbances. The 20 point and 5 point programs have shown tangible results. Even though much remains to be done, they have generated an altitude of confidence and have galvanized young and old. In spite of criticism, there is a new respect for our country abroad. I am conscious of the difficulties which farmers, industrial workers and some other sections of our population are experiencing. We are studying each problem so as to find quick solutions. Cyclone, drought and floods have caused hardship in some areas. My sympathy to all those affected. In recent months, prices of a few commodities have slightly increased, but we have already initiated corrective action which will soon show results. We have the largest grain stocks in years. Elements which wish to stir up economic trouble will be sternly dealt with as long as there is close cooperation between government and the people our economic battles can and will be won. Anyone can see that today the nation is more healthy, efficient and dynamic than it had been for a long time. The question now before us is how to restore substantively those political processes on which we were compelled to impose some curbs. Change is the very law of life. This is a time of great fluidity in the world. Contemporary society is beset with dangers to which developing countries are especially vulnerable. Hence, all changes must be peaceful. This is the legacy of our freedom struggle and of Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru. Our system rests on the belief that governments derive their power from the people and that they give expression to their sovereign will every few years freely and frankly by choosing government they want and by indicating their preferences for policies. Dear Sir, we thank you for your prompt reply and after having considered the points raised in your letter. We have pleasure in appointing you as our agent for South India. You will be our sole representative and we feel sure that your long experience of business will be valuable and lead to an extension of our retail trade. Although we have confined ourselves mostly to the sale of hardware, we have decided to extend the scope of our operations. The directors at their last meeting stated that it would be advisable to include paints in our list of products. So you will have an opportunity of developing the new side of our business. From your application, we notice that you are well qualified to deal with these two branches especially since you understand both the manufacturing and the commercial aspects of the business. As a firm of 30 years standing, we are well known in South India and although we have not previously had a representative, our goods have been distributed over a large area. The reason for appointing you is that <coughs> we feel certain that your efforts will increase our sales. In addition to the details given in our previous letter, we give the following particulars to which we call your attention. The terms offered are a salary of 200 rupees per men sum and a commission of 5% on all orders. A reasonable amount will be allowed to you for out-of-pocket expenses incurred in visiting the different parts of your area. The terms of payment are 10% trade discount on all accounts 
and 5% for cash within one month. Price lists and other printed matter will be provided by the firm free of charge and any suggestions from you will be appreciated. Circulars containing details of the extended business are now being prepared so as to be ready for distribution when required. After you have considered the matter, we shall be glad to know if you will accept the appointment. We enclose for your guidance a copy of the agreement and hope to hear from you as early as possible. Yours faithfully.